This is setting T low during airway pressure release ventilation to achieve lung protection goals. There are three published techniques to set T low when utilizing airway pressure release ventilation. And one of them is uh, setting the T low to four time constants to allow for complete exhalation. And then titrate the P low to achieve a tidal volume of approximately four to six cc's per ideal body weight. So that's four to six cc's per kilogram of ideal body weight. Now, so we could actually calculate the expiratory time constant. If the ventilator does it, we can mathematically calculate it. Under monitoring, you can see we're going to go down here, and here's my expiratory time constant. So if a ventilator allows this measured value, you could just quickly go this, find your measured value. So this is one time constant. So to make it four time constants, I just multiply this by four, and that would be 0 0.8 seconds that we want to set our T low at for this technique. So this is the easiest way. In Hamilton ventilators, they measure the respiratory time constant. Uh, you can do it this in a servo eye ventilator um, also. Or you can take the resistance and compliance measurements and calculate the time constant for yourself. But this is usually an inspiratory time constant, not an expiratory time constant. So if I go under controls, I can just change my TLO to 0.8. However, if I do not know the expiratory time constant, I can just use waveform analysis. So what I'm going to do is I will evaluate my flow waveform, which is here in purple, and I'll look at my expiratory flow component, and you can see it doesn't return to baseline. So if I'm meeting the time constants, this flow should return all the way to the baseline. And I know all my lung units are emptying when it gets to this no flow state. So I could additionally do it this way too, is I'll just lengthen it out. I'll start lengthening it out and re continue to reevaluate my flow waveform. So as you notice, I made my setting changes. I'm going to wait for this breath. And as you notice, we're not to baseline yet, so I'm going to increase the T low a little more. and then reevaluate it. So I'm waiting for the breath to be delivered, the new breath. And it's almost getting up there, so I'm going to lengthen it a little more. And you notice we're still under the calculated time constant, so we shouldn't see it um, going back to baseline anyway. But this is an example of just how to do it if you didn't know what your expiratory time constant was. And now as you start to look at the, um, the expiratory flow waveform that we're almost returning to baseline here. So we're getting close. So as we notice, we um, lengthen the T low a little more, and we're pretty much almost at baseline. So let's just extend it out to the measured value, or the calculated value, of four expiratory time constants and see what the waveform looks like. And I'm waiting for this next breath. And as you can see, that we're back to baseline. And this just reinforces that I can use my waveform diagnostics to see if my settings are appropriately. So this is one component of the technique. The other thing is to evaluate my exhaled tidal volume. And for lung protection, I want to make sure that um, these tidal volumes are consistent. And it's in the 4 to 6 cc range per kilogram of ideal body weight. Now let's just use me as an example. My ideal body weight is 72 kilograms. So ideally I'd want my Excel tidal volumes in the range from 2 
Okay, what I was stating before the video cut me off is that I want to evaluate this XL Titan volume. And I want it to be in the 4 to 6 cc range of my ideal body weight. And I, what I was stating before is the range for me, 72 kilogram male, is 288, that's the low end, and 432 is the 6 cc range. So 477 is a little over uh, 432, so what I can do to decrease this is I can start titrating my p -low. And I'm just going to increase it. And this should, um, and I'm just going to take it up a couple centimeters of water at a time. And based on my uh, compliance, it's going to decrease my exhale tidal volume. Because it's kind of manipulating my working pressure, what I have to work with, the difference between my P-low and my P-high. Just the exact same thing as um, biphasic ventilation or bi-level or bi-pap that when I, my driving pressure is kind of the difference between these two. So just the two centimeters of water dropped it by 20. Um, I'm going to move it up by another two centimeters of water and see if it drops it by approximately another 20, and that would give me my range. So yeah, it did. So now I'm very close to my six um, milliliters per kilogram of ideal body weight of 432. So I keep other settings here and reevaluate. So that might have been too much. Let's turn it down by one and see where that gets me. So the reason for using this to set a TLO is this method provides the largest allowance of TLO settings for the different ranges of lung compliance. It also results in the most stable tidal volume generation and the least amount of auto peep is generated. As you notice, I might have to go down on my PLO a little more. So you're always constantly titrating, evaluating the XL tidal volumes, and reevaluating your settings. Thank you.